So we just got the x. Well, we still have to do these two determinants to get x, but ready to write down the y determinants. So with, for y, we have the x column and the y column. We're looking in the y column now. And what we're going to do is replace the y column with the constants. So the numerator is, I'm writing in columns, 3, 6. And then the y column is going to get replaced by 4, 13. And in the denominator, we have the usual determinant of the coefficient matrix 3, negative 2, 6, 1. So go ahead and compute these determinants. Just remember the 2 by 2 is AD minus BC. So you're just going diagonals. Oh, it's a bad arrow. There we go. Go across the diagonals. So compute these out right now. So any questions on those two by twos? You should have gotten two for x and one for y. We can check these really quickly, especially when there's just two equations, two variables. You plug them in and check. So one thing you should notice is Kramer's rule is not terribly fast if you can't compute determinants quickly. If you can compute the determinants quickly, Kramer's rule is really fast. So basically, if you're using a computer, to get these determinants, you could do Kramer's rule very quickly. But if you're going by hand, it's not necessarily the fastest way to go. So that was just two by two determinants. Now we're going to switch to uh, general determinants of square matrices. And the square matrices is important. If your matrices is not square, you cannot get a determinant. So only square matrices have determinants. And there's a couple things we need to uh, think about when we compute determinants. We're going to do what's called cofactor expansion. So we're going to go across a row or down a column. So we're either going to go across a row or down a column. Depending on where the zeros are in the matrix, if there are no zeros, it doesn't really matter where you, which, uh, which you do. But if there are zeros, uh, I'll show you how to minimize your computations by choosing a best row or column to expand across. So the first thing we need is uh, minor. So matrix minor. So minor of a matrix. So we'll take our matrix to be M. We need it to be square. So I'm not going to worry about a non-square matrix here. So minor of a matrix, an m by n matrix, is one dimension smaller. Well, the best way to say it is is a sub matrix that 
with one row and one column removed. So you're basically picking one entry in the matrix and then removing everything in that column, everything in that row. So I'll write it as, uh, we have to pick a row and pick a column. So the row we'll use as i, the column we'll use as j. So mij will be a with row i and column j removed. So we'll do an example where we'll find three minors. So we'll take A, the matrix A, just be the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 matrix. And I want to know three minors. Let's do M11, M12, and then we'll get crazy and do M23. All right, for M11, this is a good time if you have a second pencil or pen, you can cover up a row or column on your matrix and you can use your finger to cover the other row or column. So for 11, we're looking at entry 11, and what you want to do is cross out that column and that row. Now, I'd recommend you don't scribble over top of your matrix because you can't erase as easy as I can. So this is where you just want to put something over top of that row and column. And all we're doing is taking the remainder. So we're pulling out row one, column one, and we're looking at what's left. So we have the matrix five, six, eight, nine. So that is our <coughs> one, one minor. Now the next minor I want you to find is one, two. So is this in row one or column one? Row one. So it goes row first, so we're row one. And then the two is the column, so row one, column two. So cross out row one and column two, and then tell me the matrix left over. These should all be one dimension smaller than your original. So you're losing a dimension. And you should get four, six, seven, nine. So find the last minor, you're in row two, column three. So make sure you circle the correct entry and then, or cross it out with your fingers and then write the two by two matrix left over. Are there any questions on that last one, two, seven, eight? All right, so those are minors. And now we're going to look at the sine matrix. And the sine matrix alternates signs with positive in the upper left corner. So if we have a three by three ma sign matrix, it's gonna go plus, minus, plus, and the second row will be minus, plus, minus, and then plus, minus, plus. You're basically laying out a checkerboard where red is either plus or minus and black is the other minus or plus. So you're basically just making a checkerboard with plus and minus. If you have a four by four matrix, it's really similar. There's a four by four. I think you would see what a five by five would look like without writing it down. So the sign matrix, you just have to make sure you start with the plus in the upper left corner, and then you just alternate. And you can go cross or down, alternating. All right, 
so there's our sine matrix or matrices. You get one for each uh, square size. So now we're going to look at row or column expansion. So I'm writing down a two, uh, three by three matrix A, and just writing A11, A12, A13, and the second row A21, A22, A23, third row A31, A32, A33. So I'm going to choose to expand across the first row. This is how to expand across first row. So from here, what we're going to do is you are basically picking one entry at a time. We're going across the first row, so we're going first entry. The next, we're going to go with A12, then A13. So what you do with the first entry, you have A11 times the determinant of minor 1, 1, meaning the submatrix with row 1, column 1 removed. Now the tricky part is the sign matrix. We are going on the first row, so we have to pay attention. The next term, A12, when we use that, we are going to have a negative. So this is going to be minus A12 times the determinant of M12. And last up, we're going to go with A13. And this is again plus, because we're in the upper right corner of the sign matrix. So it's plus A13 times the determinant of M13. And you know how to do two by two determinants. So this is the AD minus BC. So we know how to do the two by two determinants here. Where, where does the two by two pop up? Because all these minors are going to be two by twos. Uh, so let's do an example. We're going to expand right across the first row, just like we did here. So I'm going to find term of A when A is the matrix 2, negative 1, 3, minus 2, 5, 1, 0, 6, 0. So I'm being a little bit lazy with my notation. Normally, it would be correct to write your matrix with this square bracketing right here, this big square bracket, and then the determinant outside. But there's a shorthand to just, if you're going to write determinant, we just sometimes skip writing that inside bracket right there. But you can absolutely leave that up. All right, expand across the first row. So our first entry is 2, and we're going to multiply by the determinant of the minor with row 1, column 1 removed. So the minor is going to be that square matrix 5, 1, 6, 0.
So that was just position 1-1, one, one, the upper left corner. And now we're going to go for uh, position 2 in the first row. So we're going to use the negative 1 now. We have to be extra careful. We're supposed to be subtracting negative 1. So we're going to be subtracting that negative 1 times the determinant of the minor. So write down the minor with row 1, column 2 removed. So you want to get row 1 and column 2 out. So this is where you could use your finger or a pen or pencil and cover that, row, that column up. And the last one that we're going to do is the last entry in that first row. So it's plus 3 times the determinant of a minor. So write that minor down. You're taking out row 1 and column 3. And now we're going to just compute these two by two determinants and get a number out of this. So we don't distribute yet? No. Uh, and actually, you can't really distribute into, uh, into determinants. Okay. You sort of can, and we'll see how that works. But it doesn't really work uh, the, way you're, the way you might be thinking. So we get 5 times 0 minus 6 times 1 plus 1 times 0 minus 0 plus 3 times minus 12 minus 0. So we have minus 12 plus 0 minus 36. 36. So we get negative 48. And that is the determinant of the matrix A. <coughs> so any questions on those minors or any of those steps? So you do not have to expand across the first row. You can expand off row 2, row 3, or column 1, 2, or 3. So what we're going to do now is go across. We're going to do the exact same determinant, but we're going to compute it running across a different row. So row 3 looks really good because there's already a bunch of zeros. So there'll be a lot less work to do. So we're going to recompute the same determinant. So we're going to recompute the same determinant of A, but we're going to expand across row 3. So we can, we can go across any row. I could go across row 2, uh, but you'll see why row 3 is going to be very useful. Or I should say, it'll be much faster. I strongly recommend you circle the row you're going to expand across, because that will prevent you from writing those entries in your minor, hopefully. So that 0, 6, 0, those should not appear in any of the minors. All right, sign matrix, I'll write that down, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Here's our sign matrix. And just like the. Uh, determine it, we're going across the same row in our sign matrix. So we're running across row 3 in the sign matrix. So we're going to get positive 0. Does it matter what determinant this is going to be? Nope. 0 times any number is going to be 0. So I don't even need to bother writing out what's inside that matrix. So that's why we're going to save some time here. Next entry is going to be minus 6. Now I definitely have to write down the minor here. So cross out column 2, or 
cover up column two and write the minor down. And last up, we have plus zero times another determinant that I don't need to compute. So it's save computing two determinants, basically. So we got zero minus six times two plus six plus zero. Now it's negative six times eight, negative 48. All right, good. So you better get the same number no matter what you go across. So, so that, so that, yeah, that outer six is was positive, but the like that's where it picked up its negative sign. It didn't pick it up out of the matrix. So it's a little tricky. And the two by two determinants, the most common error I see is where there's one or more negatives on that, basically the negative diagonal. So this would have been a negative diagonal, but it was negative negative. And be careful if it's a, for example, a negative two and a negative three then you got a triple negative right there. So be a little bit careful with your negative signs. So I could compute this determinant six ways, and I better get negative 48 every single way that I do it. Doesn't matter which way you go. If you don't make a mistake, you'll get the same value. So that's how we're going to compute determinants. Going to be the same way for any size matrix, square matrix. So if I went to a four by four, we'll very quickly do a four by four. I'll put a lot of zeros in, so it's not too painful. So we're going to do a one four by four determinant now. So I'll call this matrix B. So we go one, two, three, zero. Zero, three, one, one. I'm trying to keep the number small. Two, zero, two, three. Zero, zero, one, one, two on the last row. So we can choose any row, any column. What row would be the best to choose? The last one, we got double zero. Is there a good column to choose? The second one's also got double zero. So we did some rows before. Let's run across column two, because it's got two zeros in it. So we're going to go uh, column two here. So I need the sign matrix, but now I need a four by four sign matrix. The sign matrix is always the same size as the matrix you're trying to get the determinant. So plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, plus. So we're going to use column two. It's a little strange because in column two, we're starting with negative. So we have <coughs> our first entry is going to be a negative 2, negative 2 times the determinant. Now we're covering up row 1. So our minor is now a 3 by 3. So our minor is 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2. So that takes care of column two, row one. Now we're going to go column uh, two, row two. So it's plus three times the determinant. This is really important when you get to bigger matrices that you don't confuse some entries. That's why you want to circle the, in this case, the column you're expanding on, and then use your second pen or 
finger to cover up that row. So we got one, three, zero, two, two, three, zero, one, two. And now we're looking at the sign matrix. We're going to be subtracting. But this is why uh, we chose column two. This is minus zero times the determinant I don't care about because it's times zero. So I'll just write a little determinant notation. And last up, we get plus zero times another determinant that I don't need to compute. So I don't care about those last two determinants because they're going to be times zero. So what we have now is we have two three by three determinants to compute. Good news is we know how to compute three by three determinants. So what's a good row or column in the first matrix? So, um, first, yeah, first. so I like first column. It's already got two zeros, so there's not so much work to do. Now, if you have your sign matrix written out, you don't have to rewrite a sign matrix. What you can do is just very carefully think about the 3 by 3 sub sign matrix. So there's the 3 by 3 sign matrix right there, hiding inside the 4 by 4. So this is negative 2 times. Now we're doing an entire 3 by 3 determinant here. So it's 0 times a determinant I don't care about, minus 2 times a determinant of 1, 1, 1, 2, plus 0 times another determinant. I don't care about those two determinants. So the second determinant we have to compute there is not a best row or column. So given that information, let's just go column three. So I'm just picking column three arbitrarily. And make sure you're using a sign matrix in column three, which is plus minus plus. So we got zero times the determinant I don't need, minus three times the determinant of one, three, zero, one. plus 2 times the determinant of 1, 3, 2, 2. So finish off the determinants here. Just compute the 2 by 2 determinants at this point. So in my opinion, 4x4 four four and 5x5 five five determinants are too uh, computationally time consuming to put on your final exam. So when I put determinant on there, I'm going to do probably a 3x3 three because three, they're very reasonable 4x4s. Four Unless there's a lot of zeros, 4x4s four get pretty bad. All right, so any questions on that 4x4? Four four? So again, they're not difficult, they're just a lot of steps to keep track of as you go. So we're going to do one last Kramer's rule in this determinant section here. Oh, before we do Kramer's rule, I need to describe when Kramer's rule will not work. So 
So I don't want to rewrite Kramer's rule because it's written in the notes. So I'm going to scroll up to it for a minute while I talk about it. Here we go, Kramer's rule. So I'll put a box around this. And let's think about what is uh, what determines we're computing. If we look at what all these x's are, determinants can very easily be zero. So it turns out the only time Kramer's rule doesn't work is if this determinant in the denominator is zero. That's when Kramer's rule won't work. So we're ready to write that down. So we have to make sure that this uh, determinant of, of a is not 0. So Kramer's rule works when your determinant is not 0. And again, that's the determinant of your original coefficient matrix. What, um, <coughs> what was column i and b again? Column i? So we did an example where, where there was two variables. Uh -huh. So column 1 is basically the x coordinate. Column 2 is the y coordinate. Uh -huh. We're about to do a three-dimensional problem, so it'll be x, y, and z. OK. So when, with the determinant of, of a with column i swapped with this is So this determinant in the denominator is the original determinant of the original coefficient matrix, okay. so without doing any swaps. All right, so we're going to use Kramer's rule to solve 2x plus y minus z equals 3 minus x plus 2y plus 4z equals negative 3 and x minus 2y minus 3z equals 4. All right, Kramer's rule, we have to write down the coefficient matrix and write down the variable matrix and the constant matrix. So coefficient matrix is 2, 1, negative 1, minus 1, 2, 4, 1, negative 2, negative 3. Now I believe this example, this exact system we've used twice before, once we solve with row reduction once we solve by finding the inverse of A and doing it in a matrix algebra type of way. And now we're going to solve it with Kramer's rule. So it should have the exact same solution we got before. So our matrix X is the X, Y, Z. It's the variable matrix. And B is the constant matrix, which is 3, negative 3, 4. So remember, Kramer's rule is only going to work if determinant A is not 0. So first thing we're going to do is see what is the determinant of A. And hope that it's not 0, or else we won't be able to solve this. So let's go ahead and compute this determinant of A. There are no zeros in this matrix, so it is completely up to you which row or column you expand across. When in doubt, I recommend row 1. And just do row 1 by default. That'll always work. The only time uh, you should really consider not doing row 1 is if there's another row or column that has more zeros. Then it's going to go faster to choose that one. But row 1 is nice because it always goes plus, minus, plus, et cetera, et cetera. You don't have to think about your signs. So go ahead and compute this determinant of A right now.
stuff that's not mine. <laughs> Whichever one you want. Thank you. Or both, uh, yeah. Questions, the Germany questions. Remember one, writing one thing down incorrectly, even just a sign, will change everything. No excuses. No excuses. <laughs> Kidding. All right, so should have gotten five, even if you went across different row, different column. So just one mistake on one sign or writing a one in, as a seven or a seven as a one, something like that. Triple negative signs. I think there was one. No, we didn't have any. Well, we sort of had triple negative signs, but be careful with double and triple negatives. All right, so what this tells us is Kramer's rule will work. We didn't get zero. So let's go ahead and find out x, y, and z. So x is going to be the di over d, where di is the A matrix with column i swapped with a constant column. And in this case, I call the constant column B. So I'm just going to say A with column I swapped with B. And this is for X, I. Now I did use X, Y, and Z. That's all right. X is going to be X1. Y is going to be X2. And Z is X3, just the variable, first, second, third variable. So we'll go for x1 first. Oh, and di is the determinant of this matrix. So x1 is going to be d1 over d. We know the determinant d is 5. d1, however, we need to compute. So let's figure out what d1 is. It's going to be the determinant of the matrix A, except column 1 is going to be swapped with 3, negative 3, 4. So column 1 is 3, negative 3, 4. And now the regular columns, I can't really zoom out anymore. The second column will be 1, 2, negative 2. I'm looking at the upper left corner. 1, 2, negative 2. And the third column, negative 1, 4, negative 3. So I'll rewrite A and B down here.
All right, so d1 is the determinant of this matrix. So compute that determinant. When in doubt, just go across row one. There's no twos in this matrix. Uh, there are twos. There's no zeros in this matrix. So there's no bonus to going across any other row or column. So just go column or uh, row one. Unless you don't, you really don't want to. Then do whatever you want. I get it. For which one? Seven. I got fifteen. Let's figure that out. <coughs> Excuse me. Can I see your work? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> Figure it out. Well, can you? Okay. So it's nine minus sixteen. One times negative seven, which equals plus seven. So how do you find D? Seven. Wait, yeah. this is D one. Yeah. Then why is this five? Because this is D. Yeah, because that's the so determinant of. So D is the determinant of A. So if we do D one D five, the answer is three. Yep. So that means. Then why do we care? Oh, because that's the answer to x. That's what I'm doing right now. Fifteen. Then how do you find x two? 
do exactly what I'm doing, except instead of switching column one out, you switch column two out. And now, one second. Why did I do it? I did it again. Look at that. 16. 2 times 9 minus 16 is this negative 7. Plus 1 times 9 plus negative minus 4 negative five. So you should have gotten 15 for this determinant here. And this lets us come back to write down x1. We got the 15 in our numerator. Our denominator was that determinant we got before, which was 5. And that reduces down to 3. So x equals 3 is the first coordinate. <coughs> for the y, that's going to be the second variable. You could also call it x2, so it's going to be d2 over d. And we need to find d2, so that's the determinant of the A matrix with, row, with column 2 swapped out. So the first column will be 2, negative 1, 1. The second column is the constant 3, negative 3, 4. And the third column is the regular third column, negative 1, 4, negative 3. So you get that determinant. And then the last variable, z, will be the third variable. That'll be d3 over d. And you can figure out that matrix. And for homework, I want you to finish this problem off. You know the answer is we did this exact problem two different ways. So if you flip back. About five or six pages in your notes, you should have the uh, solution to this. Are we like turning it in on Monday or? No, you won't turn it in Monday. Just do it so you know how to do it. Okay. I think there's a practice exam problem and maybe a quiz problem that's use Kramer's rule. So you need to know how to use Kramer's rule on three by threes. Nice. Um, and you also know the answer to this one. Mm -hmm.